Alrighty, welcome. In just one second, we're going to be analyzing a wonderful Hanukkah video. It's Hanukkah. It's time to analyze a deeply meaningful, spiritual video about the meaning of Hanukkah from Kamala Harris and her husband, Douglas Emhoff. By the way, this video is sponsored by Ring. And this is a video of Douglas Emhoff and Kamala Harris talking about Hanukkah and the meaning of Hanukkah. Now, let's just be straight about this. Hanukkah has been watered down by the American Jewish community into basically nothingness. It's basically supposed to be low rent Christmas. You light up some lights, everybody's happy, you sing some songs about a dreidel, and then you give some presents. That is not what Hanukkah is about at all. I mean, if you actually read the history of Hanukkah, like read the books of Maccabees, for example, and it is about a bloody war between Jews who wish to practice their religion, free of the Hellenizing influence of Greece, and a group of Hellenized Jews who wish to act in concert with the Greeks to shut down religious practice. In other words, in many ways, it is a battle between religion and paganism and secularism. That is, that is kind of what Hanukkah comes down to. The fact that that has somehow been you know, wrapped up into a ball by American sources into, well, basically, it's just about you light up some lights and it's about social justice. Mm, it's not any of these things. Okay, so there is something that Democrats like to do when it comes to various members of the intersectional community. And that is they find one of their friends who's a member of the intersectional community, and then they bring him forth to show that they have special solidarity with that community. So there are not a lot of high profile people in the Biden team who are Jewish. Really, not, not a lot. And so Kamala Harris's husband happens to be ethnically Jewish. I don't think that he's religiously Jewish. And the reason I say I don't think that he's religiously Jewish beyond, like in any serious sense, like beyond maybe going to shul once a year or something, is because one of the chief tenets of religious Judaism is that you're supposed to marry other Jews. So I assume that he did not keep that because Kamala Harris isn't Jewish. It's a free country. You can do whatever you want. But if we are now talking about Jewish religious practice, Jewish religious practice has certain diktats. Those are not followed by Douglas Emhoff. So I wouldn't take him as like your authoritative source on what Judaism thinks. But in order to promote the idea of solidarity with the Jewish community, they put out this video. And listen, I'm fine with solidarity. You want to do that? That's fine. But if we are talking about like the true meaning of Hanukkah versus a watered down, ridiculous, miscongeniality version of Hanukkah, which is what you're about to see, at a certain point, I'm out. So here is this video in which Douglas Emhoff questions his wife, Kamala Harris, about her views on Hanukkah, which, again, that is like me questioning my wife in a Jew born in Israel about her views on Christmas. I, I don't know what special authority Kamala Harris has to talk about Hanukkah at all, at all. As someone who frequently relies on my wife's expertise for medical care and advice, I actually ask her what she thinks. Like, really, really, this should be about Kamala Harris asking Douglas Emhoff what he thinks of Hanukkah if you're even gonna do this stupid video in the first place. That's not what happens. Here's Douglas Emhoff questioning Kamala Harris about the meaning of Hanukkah to her, which is like, what? Who? Can all right, here we go. Hey, everybody. We're here to talk about one of our favorite holidays in our big modern family. Hanukkah. And why do you love Hanukkah? I love Hanukkah because it really is about the light. Oh, and God. light where there has been darkness. Sweet. And there is so much work to be done in the world to bring light. And it is a celebration of always tikkun alam. Oh God, okay, stop this about... crap for a second. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Okay, stop it. Okay, so first of all, she's struggling with this answer in the same way that she struggled with the answer. Why did you call Joe Biden a racist and then run with him? <laughs> she has no answer to this question. And so she's like, Lady McLight Light, McLight Light Light. You see right here, I have a, I have a menorah and uh, it's got a candle on it. And you know what we do with that? We lighty, we lighty it. It's filled with light and it brings light with light. And it's about bringing light to darkness. Okay, well, actually, specifically, it's about bringing the temple practice back into practice, right? Specifically about the fulfillment of religious duty. She ain't gonna talk about that one because that ain't with the democratic agenda. Yeah, and then she says that it's about tikkun olam. Okay, tikkun olam is this bullcrap nonsense pushed by the left in which they reinterpret the phrase tikkun olam to mean a bunch of leftist social justice warrior nonsense. Okay, tikkun olam comes from this Kabbalistic idea that God shattered the unity of the universe when he created the universe and then he restricted himself. And it is our job to help put back the vessel together. But the way in Judaism that you do that is by following the commandments. The notion of tikkun olam is not about some broad social justice agenda. It's about you following particular commandments, 613 of them, in order to rectify the breaches that were created when God created the universe, because God created the possibility of human sin. He created the possibility of human freedom and human choice. And that comes complete with the capacity to help destroy the universe through your own sin. So instead, what tikkun olam originally was about in Jewish philosophy was the basic notion that you were, you were going to make the world a better place through the performance of the mitzvot. Also worth noting, tikkun olam is not considered a central part of Jewish philosophy until very late in Jewish philosophy, like namely the 20th century. Before, like if you look at Orthodox Judaism, 
Orthodox Judaism, where we actually, you know, go to synagogue several times a day and we practice 613 commandments or try to, like tikkun olam is not a central part of what we talk about ever, right? We, we always talk about following the commandments. What's the best way to practice the commandments? What are the values of the Torah? Tikkun olam is essentially a, a left-wing attempt to grab onto a Kabbalistic concept and then ram that Kabbalistic concept into, it's a square peg, ram it into the round hole of social justice warrior nonsense. So that's why she's happy with this, because this is a rewriting of Judaism into a bunch of leftist claptrap. We're going to watch more of this cloying, annoying, ridiculous video in just one second. But first, I got to tell you about our sponsors over at Ring. It is indeed doorbell season, the busiest time of the year at your front door. That is definitely true. At my house, we are receiving all sorts of packages and deliveries. Friends and family are stopping by, dropping things off with Ring. You can keep an eye on all of this hustle and bustle, no matter where you are, directly from your phone. If somebody stops by, something's going on, Ring lets you know. You can see and speak to whoever is there from anywhere. This holiday season, it's not just the best time to have Ring, it's also the best time to give it. Ring makes an excellent holiday gift. So this holiday season, give somebody the gift of peace of mind. Ring has security products for every corner of your home, inside and out. Best of all, you can see it all in the Ring app. I use Ring to keep track of my three kids. They're always running around. There's one of me, three of them. The only way I can keep track of them is with the Ring devices in my home. Ring has everything you need to keep an eye on your home this holiday season and throughout the year. See and speak to whomever is at your door from anywhere with video doorbells. Keep an eye on every corner of your house with easy to install indoor and outdoor cams. Help protect your whole home with Ring Alarm, a powerful, affordable whole home security system you can easily install yourself. For a limited time, head on over to ring.com slash Ben for special holiday offers. That is ring.com slash Ben. So apparently Hanukkah is about like gay marriage and abortion or something. Here's Kamala Harris. Fighting for justice and, and fighting for the dignity of all people. And it's about rededication. And it's about joy. Oh. And it's about God. And it's about spreading joy around the world and sharing it with your family and your friends and your neighbors and your community. That's important right now. So that's what we are doing is to wish everyone a happy Hanukkah. And to your family from ours, we wish you all the best. So that is an enthusiastic. Like candle? Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Oh, now, she, now she's excited because she's got something to do. We're going to light a candle here. Light a candle for Tikkun Olam. Solid stuff right there. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. And then they light a candle. Biden-Harris transition. It's about joy. I love when he has to like pipe in right there. He's like, and it's about joy too. It's also about joy. Again, if you want to ignore the entire message of the holiday, then go with this. It's about, so what we learned in this video from Kamala Harris is that Hanukkah, a holiday that I actually celebrate and know about because, again, I'm an Orthodox Jew. Apparently, it is about several things. It is about lighty McLight light, McLight light light, light, light. And also, it is about joy. McJoy, joy, joy, joy. Also, we get together and it's, it's joyful. So basically, it's like, you know, like Thanksgiving, but not really because Thanksgiving had bad white people in it. So like, it's it, another holiday. Like, I don't know. It's basically like, like Kwanzaa. It's like, well, it's not Kwanzaa. Right. It's not it's not like Kwanzaa, really, because it's because it's got Jews in it. So it's 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 more like it's more like no, that's got some Jesus in it. It's it's more like it's more like Earth Day. It's like Earth Day, right? Without the composting of the of the creator's girlfriend, but but more like Earth Day. Like of all the things, it's like Earth Day, right? It's completing the world and joy and light and happiness. So all that stuff comes later. It's about an actual bloody civil war in 198 BC. Antiochus III of the Seleucid Empire took control of the Jewish homeland of Israel, it was then called Judea. He promised the Jews they would not have to hand over control of their religious observance to the Greeks. They would not be forcibly Hellenized. Hellenized just means essentially Greekified. Nevertheless, a lot of Jews decided to imbibe Greek religion. When Antiochus III died, his son Antiochus IV it took over. He immediately tossed out the Jewish high priest, who was named Onias. That guy was opposed to Hellenization, replaced him with Jason, who was a loyalist to the Seleucid Empire. Jason had bribed the king to get him to make that move. Jason then wrote a law removing Judaism as the religion of the city, and that was just the beginning. So you heard Kamala talk about all the light, 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 joy, joy, joy. The actual reason that Jews light the candles is because Jewish tradition says that when the temple services were reinstituted, there was not enough oil for the menorah. One day's worth of oil lasted for eight, hence the eight days of Hanukkah. But that followed, again, a bloody civil war in which Jewish loyalists, were for the Maccabees, were fighting back not just against the Seleucid Empire, but also against Hellenized Jews who wished to crack down on Jewish observance. So it's much more about the establishment of national sovereignty. It was much more about religious observance and freedom to worship. It was much more about this harsh civil war than it was about these vague, bizarre notions of tikkun olam and joy and light and getting together and then we're nice to each other. That's, that's not what the holiday is about. And it's about rededication. And it's about joy. It's about rededication to God. I, I love that she just leaves that out there. She's like, rededication, rededication. Well, it's rededication of the temple. 
What did they do in the temple? Did they perform abortions? No, they did not. In the temple, they rededicated themselves to the temple service, which was about rededication to God and the mitzvot, right? It was about the reinculcation of Jewish practice in Israel. By the way, at point of sword, and so this is the anodyne watered down version of Hanukkah brought to you by people who really are not super fond of religious practice and religious worship. And this is kind of what so many folks on the left actually want religion to be. What they want religion to be is basically the way they think of recycling, right? Recycling is just virtuous. It's good in and of itself. It doesn't matter if it does anything, but it's got like some ritual attached to it. And it's nice for the world, right? It's got like joy and light and rededication and fun and tikkun olam. Okay, that is not what any real religious holiday is about in any mainstream religion that I'm aware of. And if you can boil down a holiday to joy and light, and you can't even explain what the holiday is, especially a holiday that is as harsh as Hanukkah. Like the fact that people think that Hanukkah is like happy dappy do is beyond me. It's just crazy. Again, even the part of the Hanukkah service that is about lighting the candles in the temple, okay, the part about the miracle of the oil, that comes about, that story comes about in the Talmud. That is hundreds of years after the actual events of Hanukkah. Hanukkah was originally meant to commemorate the victorious Maccabees and the establishment of the Hasmonean dynasty after the expulsion of the Seleucids, right? So like it actually has real world consequences, a very practical, hard nosed holiday. But I just love that it has become for for secularists, light and joy and miscongeniality. And what's your favorite day? My favorite day is in April. It's just perfect for a light sweater. that's, That's what it comes down to. So thank you for that meaningful tribute to my religion that I take rather seriously people who do not take my religion particularly seriously. If you actually want to hear what Hanukkah is actually about, I did an entire video on this a couple of years ago. We put the link in the description below. Click on that. You can see the whole story there. It's not Kamala Harris's story. All righty, we'll see you here next time. And happy Hanukkah. And light a candle in favor of religious observance. Do that in honor of Hanukkah.